to the Enter Tournament of Champions podcast. <laughs> Airhorn Central here. Call it a triple. Two Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> I'm the Tiger. We don't have copyrights. All right, so <laughs> nice. Thank you. That fit in that. That was good. In the song, yeah, that was good. Yep. Exactly, just flowed. So we are live, kind of, in t- from Texas and Colorado to simulcast. Don't ask me how we do it. It's just because it's 20, 2017. It's I almost said 2011. That magic. was wrong. Well, yeah, that would have been way wrong. <laughs> I wish it was 2011. I'd maybe have less responsibilities. I don't oh, know. God. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I'd probably be at a shitty job, though. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I was still at a shitty job. And if so. my former employer's listening to this, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I know I signed papers. <laughs> I said I wouldn't say things like that. You did. Fucking like NDA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I am. This is Jeff speaking over here. Why don't everybody else uh, introduce JD? Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm JD. Uh, that's me. Hi. Right. How, how are you? <laughs> and then we got some other guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kyle, and I'm over here in Colorado, and that's me. Ooh. Cool, 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 cool. So today, right. uh, if you guys uh, have, listen, have not listened to the show before, what we do is we take the quote-unquote champions of cinema, gaming, t- TV shows, or miscellaneous, as this episode is kind of, and we um, we pretty much reveal our favorites like we did in the last episode for this topic, and then we put it all together in like a 16-seated single elimination tournament and hash it out, vote it out until there's a one singular winner that is a champion of champions. Yeah. Um, this week's topic is working slash active, like alive, stand-up comics. <laughs> um, meaning no, you know, Richard Pryor's not on here is what I'm trying to say. Damn. Yeah. I, I was about to do Wait, Richard, Richard Pryor impression, Pryor's but... dead? <laughs> <laughs> you t- Wait, you didn't know that? Holy shit. No, I knew that. <laughs> oh, okay. I was so, I was legit concerned for a moment. <laughs> uh this is gonna be fun though this is a controversial list i think and um yeah yeah i think is. people I, that i put it up i put it up in a group and people were not happy with our picks <laughs> <laughs> like, I hey, like well i was like well everybody uh you're all fucked up so you're all fucking wrong <laughs> <laughs> laugh learn to laugh people yeah come on these guys like, are good i like how somebody commented at least on your uh on your personal facebook page and said dave Chappelle easily and i'm like easily is it? Yeah. Is it? I think it takes balls. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. This is a great... I think this is a great bracket, though. I really do. Uh, I think so, too. Lots of different styles of comedy in here. Yeah. And uh, we're going to start with the first matchup, which is our... Uh, for those that don't know how March Madness works, it's 16 seed versus 1 seed, 15 versus 2nd, and so on and so on. But you kind of mix it up, mix up the bracket, so you have, like, you know, the winner of 16 and 1 fighting the winner of 9 and 8, so on and so on. Just Google March Madness if you're not familiar. <laughs> and uh, go listen to the last episode if you're curious. How the hell did so-and-so get number whatever, you know? I mean, just go listen to it. It's a highly enjoyable. Yeah, it's a really good one. Oh, yeah. We're not nearly as funny as these people on this list, but it's still fun. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. Fall a little bit short. Uh, Kyle, you're going to hate this, but you're actually first. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. What's, what's going on? What's up? Well, because I started the last one and JD started the first one. Well, yeah, yeah, but what's who's who's up? Who's up? Uh, it's a mystery. Yeah. You're gonna have to just pick somebody from the. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's I, a... <laughs> I pick. <laughs> I'm gonna go Bill with Jeff Burr, Dunham. Which every everyone in the world thinks Bill Burr should be on this list, apparently. So oh, oh. shame on us. <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> do your impression, JD. Hey, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say no to that. Uh, like Bill Burr. And uh, I think he should be on this list. It's all it's all I'm fucking saying. He should fucking be on the list. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> pretty, good. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I pretty like good. that. It's good. Thanks. How about um, it's, it's not as good as my uh your your high back. <laughs> yeah. The the <laughs> high pitch. <laughs> That's all you can do is come back. <laughs> One drink pony. Right. This hurts me. I don't oh my god, I don't get it. So if I went okay, so that meant Kyle went so you went last uh so you'd be second this time because you went last on the last right. tournament episode. Okay. Right. I'm just mapping all this out for future brackets. We're gonna get through this one. So today. there's no confusion. That means I'm next on the next bracket, which is fucking impossible. But anyway, so the first bracket is number 16 seed Doug Stanhope, who I'm glad we got to uh, yeah. fit in here. Me too. Completely. Uh, I don't know if underrated is the right term, but I, th- I think it is. Underexposed, maybe? I, maybe? Maybe underexposed, because he's yeah. only going to resonate with the people who are into that type of comedy. Yeah. You know, which I guess goes for every comedy, but he's really niche, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> right. And very... 
very uh, not just raw, but like blue. I guess you would call them blue a little. Yeah. Maybe yeah. put it lightly. <laughs> I mean, even when you think of blue comics, you're like, oh, yeah. it tells like dick jokes and fisting jokes and stuff. But, but it's way more than that. Like it's yeah controversial like, opinions. He's one of those guys you would just expect to run into at an airport that's right next to a strip club, and that you have great stories about what he was talking about. Like he's just one 100%. of those kind of guys. Right, and you can talk to him about politics and not get pissed off. Yeah. It, at least for me. That's, I mean, philosophically, I'm kind of on the same page as this guy. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, Doug Stanhope has a tough task ahead of him, and I think this is actually a, a kind of, we have a lot of poetic matchups here. This is one of them. Uh, yeah. He's facing off against our number one seed that we all agreed upon, Louis C.K., uh, which is which is a great matchup. I yeah. think these Yikes. two have a lot of similarities, so yeah. I think it's great. How would you vote, Kyle? Uh, you know, um, man, I, I'm, uh, I was, I don't know who nominated for Doug Stanhope. Was he on one of our top tens, or was he, he one was of the on honorable mentions? mentions? Yeah, he was yeah. an honorable mention that ended up. Uh... You grabbed them, but he was going to be one of the ones that I nominated if someone didn't. So oh, okay, uh, I, I, st- I stood firmly behind that. So I'm glad to see him up here. But sure. uh, man, I was just in a conversation today about Louis C.K.'s like legendary. Can I say that word? The, the F word. We'll just say the F word. That's not fuck. <laughs> uh legendary uh f word rant or whatever yes. and it was absolutely you know it was awesome and i went back and watched it again because you know i could watch that for the hundredth time yeah and uh just it's legendary and i got to show it to a few people who never seen it before a couple people who actually didn't like louis ck and they're like okay well that's actually pretty funny <laughs> validation <laughs> validation runs over my body um yeah so louis ck for sure for me on this one but that's what that's only because Tuck Stanhope's going up against our number one seed. You know, it's yeah. almost unfair. Yeah, it's, it's really just a matter of numbers, I guess. Here, and sure. even then, though, we we none of us feel obligated to vote based on the numbers. The place, no, I don't want people to know that. Yeah, like, and well, in the past, and then this is always somebody's first episode. So in the past, you know, we've had our not number one win, and, and in fact, I would say more times than not, our not number one wins. So yeah, we'll yeah. we'll see how it all shakes out. Yeah, but that's why we have three people here, so majority rules. Yeah. Uh, the slimmest of majority rules. Yeah. This is like the smallest majority you could possibly yeah, ask for. Right. Besides one person. Fine. It works. Yeah. Worse. Uh, so, JD, you're actually next, so I would be obsolete yeah. in, this, in this vote. But that's, that's I, I, I can bet I would probably vote a certain way. Assuming I'm going for Louis C.K. Um, assuming, throw, yeah. Let's throw a quick one. No, um, Louis C.K., is he wins it just because I think his reach... Uh, as a comedian, I don't, there aren't that many people that don't know about him. Everybody's already kind of at least seen something he's done and has an opinion for the most part. There are certainly people out there that haven't. But, um, I mean, Stanhope is... I had to really, really dig to find his stuff on Netflix. Really? It was like towards the bottom of the barrel of specials at the time. Yeah. Because it wasn't always like the treasure trove of comedy that it is now, like three or four oh, years no. back. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was suggested to me because I watched something else, but... I really, really dig his stuff, man. I like, uh, I just, I like his vibe. I, I think I'd get along with him really well. But, yeah. Um, man, He's definitely a dude that you'd want to hang with. Yeah. Whereas Louis C.K. is not somebody that you're like. No, I would be <laughs> terrified. I'd walk out right. of that with a very deconstructed feeling about how and I if, feel about myself. Right. And like, if yeah. you watch his show, you know he doesn't want to interact with people. Yeah. Like, ever. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't, right. And I don't think he's feigning that at all. I think right. that I think that disdain is very real. Whereas um, Doug Stanhope, he's a total party dude. Oh, like, yeah, dude. Has, he's has so the biggest super, su- biggest super Bowl parties that everyone loves to go to. Yeah. Is like practically the mayor of his own yeah. town you know like yeah. he's a cool guy you know like so uh all, all respect to doug stanhope he's on the list for a reason uh but i i gotta push louis ck through man he's too big he's too good a juggernaut i'm, I'm gonna Huge. go ahead and, he's a juggernaut in this in this bracket i think yeah i'm gonna go ahead and go with uh louis ck too and kind of save my energy until i need to really really fight for him yeah um that was my dog shaking his goddamn body which... what a loud asshole <laughs> i know sorry everybody <laughs> sorry sometimes you know the tags make noises all right so uh the the louis ck lck is moving on <laughs> uh so the next matchup i'm going first on another poetic matchup i think because these are two of the um hardest hitting comedians in terms of uh, boundary pushing mm-hmm. i think like they're they're always like where is the line yeah and once they discover where the line is they always cross it every single joke it seems like this, this is a great matchup too. i know man <laughs> really couldn't have asked for it it's like we planned it out this way but we, li- I know, we literally we did, didn't. It yeah. didn't yeah it didn't happen that way um but this is our number nine seed daniel tosh uh who's a great stand-up comic uh i 
judge solely on that because I don't really I don't really care for Tosh if I can be honest. But yeah, um, neither do I. Yeah. But then we have him facing Anthony Jeselnik, the new blood, I guess you could say, the new king of raunch or <laughs> not really raunchy. It's just fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah, and you're not. You yeah. shouldn't be saying that stuff. <laughs> but it's funny. Right. It is funny. Um, this is really really tough for me. It's not easy. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat some Chipotle and think about it. You guys want to record tomorrow or? Sure, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Gas isn't a thing. I'm free pretty much all day, and Chipotle, you know, you know, that takes some time to get through you. So I understand. <laughs> I watched. I didn't have time to rewatch Daniel Tosh's special. I, but I know his first CD like the back of my fucking hand. Yeah. It's great. Um, I can't remember the name of that special. I'm, I'm, I'm still on my streak of not remembering special names. I Some struggle. of them are just not good. Not good <laughs> names. But uh, Anthony Jeselnik's, I did rewatch Thoughts and Prayers. And that whole ending rant where he's like, everything I've told you up until this point has been, I mean, except for Eric Clapton. <laughs> except for Eric Clapton's kid and the whatever thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> were completely bullshit because they were just jokes. And he's like, everything going forward is true. And then he tells all the stories about uh, yeah. how he gets in trouble with like his bosses, like with Comedy Central, for when he tweeted about the Boston uh, Marathon bombing, um, it's a great man, man, it's great. And, and I, I finally remember what he got in trouble for with with uh, the Jeselnik offensive. Is that he? What made, was it? It was he was he played like a shark video or a video of a, a dude getting eaten by a shark in like New Zealand or something. Uh -huh. And the entire like not the entire country, but like there was just outspoken like you know hatred of him, and they were just like. Uh, you need to pull that segment. He's like, how about you go fuck yourselves? Oh! <laughs> yeah. That seems um, very like him to do. Yeah. They kept getting death threats and stuff. Jesus. Because they were, they, were, they were making jokes out of real tragedy's expense, I guess. But that's that's his MO, and that's Daniel Tosh's MO, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great... So everybody needs to go listen to that. I'm mostly talking about Jeselnik so much because I have... Uh, I, I think I'm going to go towards Tosh on this one. Uh, his stand-up is just insanely strong it like every time he comes out with a special there's i mean for me at least there's never a week there's never a weak joke it's like he intentionally yeah puts off stand up until he has something to say even if it's like quote unquote wrong yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's politically incorrect yeah uh, it's i don't know man all of his jokes just hit super hard he's just a great writer so i'm gonna have to go with tosh so kyle you're okay. next oh nice um <clears throat> Uh, for the sport of it, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said. By the way, um, oh, I, thank you. I back oh. up and back up everything that you said. But uh, just for the sport of it, and because I truly believe it in my heart of hearts, I'm going to go Anthony Jeselnik. Just because, mm. yeah, I think uh, he he makes me laugh more in this day and time right now. Maybe it's because I'm getting older and more cynical and that stuff. I need those deep cuts to get those real, real big laughs that I know that I shouldn't be laughing at. But uh, uh, yeah, I think I think he uh, I think he does it better for me right now. So. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to have to make a JD make a decision, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, have fun. I'm really doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really torn whether to do, like, body of work and judge him for Tosh.0, oh, because <laughs> I, I used to like that show a lot. I think we and, all have. And sure, now, we all did, yeah. And, and yeah. now I think it's kind of like you were saying, you need that deep cut, and you're just not going to get that on a 20-minute Comedy Central show. There's too big of a leash there. Mm -hmm. um, and Giselnik is one of them, like, I've seen his stuff, but I don't think I've ever rewatched anything of his. And I, I want to say I've only seen how many specials does he have total? I've two, okay. like two, two or three. Okay, no, I think two, I've only two, seen I've only, one. I've only heard there might be three. The one but that I've you're talking about, where he talks about Clapton's kid. That shit is. <laughs> God. Oh my god! Like yeah. I've never felt more uncomfortable by myself in my life. You know, like there's always that added element when you're yeah. with somebody. You're like, yeah, how, how fucked up should I act at this? Because like, <laughs> exactly. like there's yeah. that was, game that you play. Up, but when you're just one, sitting alone, you're I think just that like, was the joke. Fuck. Oh my god, that was the joke where in the middle of the show when he left it. Thank God this dude left the majority of the stuff that he left in the special. Uh, that was the one, I think, where he told the joke about Eric Clapton's kid and how yeah. he died. And everybody kind of went, oh, <laughs> talked for like two seconds. And yeah. then they all started clapping. And he was like, that was the weirdest response. Yeah, I've ever yeah, had yeah I think you're joke. right. Oh, man. Because <laughs> they were like kind of, he's like, it's, he's like, look, it's a well-rounded joke. First off, you have to know, you have to know like three things. You have to know <laughs> that Eric Clapton had a kid in that horrible tragedy. That's right. You have to Breaks know about that stupid, terrible fucking song. <laughs> I was like, wow. 
Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, he really, really gets a lot of meat out of that one. Right. And oh, I'm like, I'm like squeamish even thinking about no. it. Um, Not to take over. I don't want to change your mind if your mind is. No, I'm, I'm. I just wanted I'm to say on one the thing about him. Okay. And that is that uh, he's one of those comedians where, unlike Daniel Tosh, who, who does have onions of jokes where it's just constantly every every time yeah. you listen to it you get something new out of what he's talking about you're like oh right uh jeselnik is one of those dudes where like the build-up the yeah. tension to Slow his delivery. jokes uh are part of the the the, the better part of his del- his uh, routine because Absolutely. once you know the punchline or the big ending the, the shock ending yeah it's kind of like oh well, i don't need to watch that again because yeah. i already know how it ends right yeah um that's the only weakness I could possibly point out in Jeselnik. Yeah. Uh, even at the same time, I could watch that rant near the last, what, 20 minutes of the show, like, every day. For sure. <laughs> so good. So, I guess, I guess it's going to boil down to, like, the young grizzled veteran versus the new up-and-comer. I'm going to put Tosh through. Uh, Ooh. I, 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 only Only because of the body of work, uh, I, it's... His shit has made me laugh so consistently over the last I will, like, 12 I will years. Say, and, and JD, you brought this up. Uh, you're talking about going back and rewatching things. I've rewatched Daniel's Tosh yeah. stuff more than I have for Anthony sure. Jeselnik. Because you know what you're getting into with Anthony Jeselnik. For sure. So it's like, right. gosh, and, it's and, at least a good time. There's no dread. <laughs> you don't want to dive back into it. Like, no. it, it, it's so... Mm. One of my it's favorite good, bits, though, and the dude never crazy. loses it. You would think that with a regular show like Tosh.0, where comedians... Stand-up comics get worn down by the material. Like, even Conan is a, a genius. Conan O'Brien's a genius. Like, he just mm-hmm. is. He went to Harvard. Yeah. He's smart as fuck. Yeah. And he applies all of that intelligence to comedy for some reason. <laughs> Good for him. That's yeah. great. Thank God. Yeah, uh, thank I know, right? <laughs> but the thing is, is that uh, even him, he doesn't always bat home runs. He doesn't always hit home runs with his jokes. And he at least calls himself out for it. Yeah. But the thing but is, when you're doing that every really night, well. you would think people can't lose it. But his stand-up just fucking improved somehow yeah. in the last yeah. special from last year. That was it's his career suicide note bit. Yeah. He was like, I wrote it out. Do you guys want to hear it? And he just goes, Dear Jews... He's like, that's all I have so far. That's, have. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> no, man, I love the quick punches with Tosh. I do yeah. too. I really do. And the seeing him restrained on the TV show is I've had to stop watching it. It's tough. Yeah. It the little skits tough. just kill me. Like so they were funny shit. in the early going. Yeah, funny yeah. early on, but well, now, now this gets not just being exposed like, to anybody. It, it always ends up in him just being naked and just <laughs> making his office yeah. people uncomfortable. And yeah. I'm like, this is dumb. This, yeah. this isn't the same episode I saw last week. shit on everybody's laptops in a staff meeting. Yeah, it's eighth dumb. time this season. <laughs> Fucking great. All right, great, so that aside... I guess we can find some flaws in him in the next round, but Jesus Christ. That is fine. He's got some great stand-up. Everybody should really go expose himself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the next round, JD is first on this Ooh. one. This is our number... Th- Ooh. Is that 13? Yeah, that's yeah. 13 seed Ari Shafir of uh, that... This is not happening? This is not happening. Okay. Yeah. Of this is not happening fame. It's it's his show, right? Like it is. He has yes, guests he's on. the host. Okay. Yes. Because I just watched Out of Context YouTube yeah. videos. He does at least, like... A segment every other episode oh, okay. so every now and then he has an extra person come in but um that his uh smuggling weed story yeah. is one oh of the best oh my ones. god yeah that's great that um, is great but he's facing uh tom segura number, number four favorite. seed them, them joe rogan boys that's pretty crazy yeah oh yeah they are right yeah yeah that's what a what Ooh. an interesting matchup man they're both I, like best buds I, I will admit i've never seen a stand-up special from ari shafir does he have i one? can't find one so, he does not have uh, an hour special. I think he has some 30-minute stuff, and okay. uh, all of his stuff is um, you got to catch him live, you know? Like, yeah, uh, right. He's like he's like Dave Attell now, you know, yeah. we'll talk about later. You know, it's like you gotta, you got to catch that boy live or just off, off, you know, off YouTube or something. Exactly. I just watch little segments of, like, where he's part of a half-hour block of comedy or whatever. Yeah. It's like a 12-minute YouTube video. And exactly. then I watched uh, a lot of the This Is Not Happening stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, Man, he's got a knack for storytelling. He yeah, he really does. He really, he really does. But Tom Segura really does too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but like in a smaller way. Mm-hmm. His stories aren't as big. Um, and he's good at just jokes. Yeah, he's yeah, just he he's is. just a funny fucking dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So just from an exposure standpoint, I'm I'm more inclined to go with Tom. Um. I'm kind of sad that I left him off my list. I thought he was a little. I honestly didn't know if anybody else knew him. Like I've never. Oh, I've seen oh, his yeah. two stand ups and I've laughed and I've showed them to a couple people and they're like, yeah, it was all right. Like I've never what? really gotten a positive reception. 
So that's weird. The but people in my I life aren't fucked up is. enough. <laughs> exactly. He's a very <laughs> fucked up. Like yeah. his his like podcast is fucked up. His his Facebook group is fucked yeah. up. Like everything that revolves around him is kind of toxic. But uh, it's uh, it's good. You yeah, know, it's good if you're into that. So I'm gonna vote for uh, Mister Segura. Uh, that's probably how he says it. Segura. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Segura. Segura. Oh yeah, Segura. That's good, man. Holy shit. I don't know if I said anything there. I probably offended all of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. Oi. And then right. the Japanese list. The yeah, like, like, Jap- Japan actually just went red. I'm looking oh, at our shit. map right now. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because we get live stats. I don't know if people knew that. Yeah, we From do. Somehow before we even edit and. Post this episode, we get live stats. Dude, the internet, the internet is great, everybody. The internet is strong. Uh, so I am next, and I am. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's because of a lack of exposure. I think I, I, I understood. I saw enough of Ari Shafir's stuff to um, know what his <coughs> routine is or what his uh, habits in the comedy world are. Um, I just like Segura more. That's yeah. pretty much what it boils down to for me. Okay. Uh, I think he's just, man, he's a great, he's not just a great storyteller, and he has ridiculous stories that there's just no way they're factual, but whatever, it's right. great. There's no way. <laughs> great that yeah. he constructs, he can construct them the way they do, the way he does, and, and tell them in the manner that he does. Um, but he's got great one-liner jokes, too, occasionally, that are spread out between yeah. that, and you're like, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to go with him, and I like his, I like his, uh, his demeanor and stuff, the, his uh, personality. Me too. Um, how, cool. how, like chill chill he is sometimes it's ridiculous he's just ridiculous and he has a good personality uh so segura f- for me which kind of puts him through but you know kyle's i mean he was my number he- one so yeah i'm obviously gonna go tom segura not to say that ari shafir isn't talented but a uh, guy needs to put out a special so he gets more exposure absolutely uh, he's very so happy he's very happy with his level of success and that's something that joe rogan talks about all the time that he's just like he's got that type of success where he can just disappear for a bit and then kind of pop back into the scene and like no one will kind of know that he's gone but people will be glad when he's back you know it's just this really weird line that he walks so uh yeah. uh good for him you know he's he's living the life that he wants to but damn and get that get a special out it's right. big out good for you <laughs> good job so the next round is interesting i legit don't know how i'm gonna vote but my vote might not end up mattering <laughs> Well, uh, well, I don't know. Actually, I think it will. Yeah, I think it will. Because oh, I think probably. we know that. I think we know the divide. <laughs> yeah, we do. I think You're we right. Know who the swinging Chad is in this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, who's Chad? Why is he hanging? <laughs> Tell him to go home. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, number number twelve seed David Tell, uh, who stand up. I never really watched when I was younger. It just didn't grab me. Maybe I just wasn't mature enough for it yet. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Or something, or I didn't, I, I didn't, I don't know. The, maybe just the writing didn't grab me because you guys know I, I, I'm obsessed with great writing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, watching watching Roadwork, which is the only thing that's on Netflix of his. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching Roadwork, I was like, man, this guy is quick on his feet. Uh, so quick. He's got some. I mean, sure, it's there's some raunch to it, but it's smart raunch if that's a mm-hmm. thing. Uh, so I mean, I got to give him kudos, of course. But uh, yeah, um, number five seat is uh, it's Aziz. Aziz, I'm sorry. What? It was pretty good. <laughs> sound like Tom there. What? No, I can't do it. My mine just sounds like a really really cheap knockoff. Like I don't. Know. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. <laughs> All right, uh, it works though. It works a little bit. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. You just gotta sound like an annoying six year old, and I think you're on yeah. the right track. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, you're first on this round. Uh, let's see here. You know, um, he pretends to struggle. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 like not even a struggle for me, I guess. It's just it's David Tell. I like his season. Sorry, I was just talking to someone on, online today, you know, about it. Like I, I like I think he's a funny guy. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. his stand up comedy just doesn't re- resonate with me too much. Uh, and David Tell, it's hard to like push David Tell forward because like talk about a guy who doesn't do shit, you know, like you got to catch this guy alive. <laughs> And only yeah. if you're, you're in New York. He's not doing road tours or anything like that. So you got to hope Comedy Central picks him up for a show or Netflix picks him up for something or he does a quick something, you know. But uh, it, he, you can barely get him while um, Aziz is in your face. He's present. You know who that guy is. For real. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I got to go Dave, man. Like, I, I, got a, I got a long history of love for this guy and this stand-up comedian. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and he uh, – I'll, I'll uh, maybe save some more words for later in case I got to, you know, okay. push him forward for something. Mm-hmm. D, J is next. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> um, he's my number one. So, <laughs> so uh, obviously, uh, but I mean, seriously, D- 
Dave Attell is, is um, a loose fixture of my childhood because I used to watch him um, it, on Insomniac. Hmm. So I, I had a little bit of respect there, but I've never seen him do anything live. Like y'all said, you kind of have to catch him live in New York, and we don't live anywhere near New York, so that kind of <laughs> sucks. Um, I think the main reason... I have Aziz as my number one is, uh, yeah, especially the most recent stand-up stuff is really not all that great. Um, but his overall body of work, I think, um, I mean, he's on two, been on two really good TV shows, one of them on Netflix. One of the best comedies ever made. Which is fantastic. Uh, Yeah. Has a great book out there well, for not, anybody not that Master likes of books. Sorry, I was referring to uh, Pat Master of None is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Yeah, for Parks sure. Parks and Rec is Rec legendary. Is fantastic. <laughs> and then Master of None is just really funny. Uh, um, Master of None is absolutely great. And I yeah. actually brought this to people's attention today who are just like, oh, I, I haven't watched that show. And I'm like, it's great. You know, yeah. he stars in it. If you like In Season Sorry, like, you know, like, this is great. Like, for I sure. Think it's, I think it's funny. Great, um, great. Have, have y'all read or gotten into his book or heard anything about it at all? Modern Romance? Yeah. No. It's a good book. Um, it's it's pretty funny. That's I all like, you're going to say? I like Cliffhanger. It. All right. Haven't really read all of it yet. I got like <laughs> three chapters into it, and uh, it's really all I could squeeze in this week. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while, actually. Um, I, I got to vote for Aziz, man. Now, I know I'm not really like making the most compelling case here. Mm-hmm. I just, I like him. He makes me laugh a shitload, and... Um, I've listened to his stuff for a long time, so I like everything that he does. Everything he touches works for me. Nice, man. Yeah. Nice. All right. Except for his wiener. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, don't be racist, man. Just don't. <laughs> what? I, yeah, I've listened to him for probably a good six or seven years. David Tell is somebody that um, I probably subconsciously avoided because as a young kid when insomniac was on is that the name of it insomniac mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. insomniac yeah. uh i was just like all right i guess it's time for bed then like i just lost interest i just was not into it as a kid yeah yeah um i don't know then i watched the new special and i was like oh he's actually really funny like what was i thinking as he man i wish i had more exposure to him so i wouldn't have to make a snap judgment right now you know what i mean um, oh I, I do yeah it's, it's hard to just judge someone off of just like one special and right you know it's really really tough um, especially for, I mean, because I'm not doing, I'm not even close to done doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, we're going to talk about a few other people that I'm like, oh, yeah, that, I only saw that one special. I know. Shit. Yeah, I've got, I've got mm-hmm. one or two people where I'm like, I've seen a couple YouTube things. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> right. I, I, I know my stuff. Couple... <laughs> yeah. I know my stuff about, okay, I saw YouTube. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to have to go and I'm going to apologize to Kyle for this. I'm going to go with Aziz. Oh. I guess the next round will probably be a little easy then. But... <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> but it's fine. I'm going to have to go with Aziz because his first special, I was looking up the title of it for those that don't know, Intimate Sen- Moments. Intimate Moments for Sensual Evening? Yes. Yeah. That's a great special. And I laugh my <laughs> ass off count. repeatedly. The thread count. Uh, yeah, what was it? Oh, man. 200 or whatever. Like, um, advertised, 600. Actual, 296. What the fuck? <laughs> like, this was a drug deal. Hotel Luxury Lenin. It's like, give me my fucking threads, bitch. Like... <laughs> <laughs> even without the delivery oh my god acting that upset about something that stupid yeah. is great i think that's, yeah, that's yeah. absolutely yeah. um that special just made me laugh from end to end and i was i showed that to several people that were just like oh he was super annoying in scrubs that's all they knew him from oh my god how they was were, that what you know him from I, well he was annoying in that show but <laughs> he was and that was like the first thing that he was in that was like yeah, big it was Outside of left, what he did, he on, left uh, that to go do Parks, I think. Outside of what he did on uh, on what was it, Human Giant or something on MTV? He what was on it? Human Giant, yeah, with what's Him his face, Andre, and Paul Shear and stuff. Paul Shear, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, it was like Scrubs, and everybody was like, "Oh, that dude's fucking annoying." Yeah. And I had to like talk somebody into listening to the stand up, and they laughed their ass up, could not stop listening to it after I showed it to them. Yeah, yeah. I have fond memories of that special, um, and I think Dangerously Delicious is great too, because that's that's the one where I remember specifically the bit about him uh, talking about texting people, Yeah, and how you're having like a back and forth with somebody, and suddenly like... They just, it's like they, what, what did you like ride a roller coaster, put your phone in a bag and ride a roller coaster for three hours? What the yeah. fuck happened? Yeah. Like, it makes no sense. I, God, I love that routine. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go with Z's, regrettably, I guess. Okay. This is kind of a hard, it's, it's a hard okay. decision because I'm kind of like a little indifferent. Yeah. <laughs> a little, a smidge. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think the next round will be a little bit easier, to be honest. Probably. Uh, sorry to um, 
JD in advance. Let me just, just save all my good stuff for the next round. <laughs> All right. He's gonna make so. like all these points, and I'm like, "Fuck, I can't even disagree with that." That's y'all, true. Y'all aren't gonna <laughs> like him. You're not gonna love him. You gotta have him. Sorry. <laughs> and then we're gonna be like, "Get out." Okay. All right. Then we're gonna be like, "Hey, that really great movie Jordan Peele did." All right. So <laughs> the next matchup is our number. I don't have the numbers. of page cut them off. Two and fifteen. Okay, two and fifteen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have fifteen seed Burt Kreischer. He. Snuck in after a preliminary round. Chris uh, Scheister. Chris Kreischer. Kreischer? Uh, versus our number two seed, David uh, Vivian Chappelle. Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the Phenom, but Vivian's good. The, like the Phenom. Uh, <laughs> it's the honor taker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, he killed him. All right. So, um, I mean, I guess the, the inspiration for all of this was really like thinking of stand-up comedy especially this year um in this in the current climate netflix has Mm -hmm. and we were just like man dave chappelle's got new i mean how did they land dave chappelle that was like the one get that netflix can brag about i mean i know louis ck that's great yeah sarah silverman's got one coming out that's great mike probiglia has been on there before so that's great he's still there um but dave chappelle is is a huge monumental get for them uh, so this really kind of inspired the whole conversation. I'm going first. That's why I'm talking so much. Sorry. Um, but um, I'm glad you guys exposed me to Burt Kreischer. I watched a lot of his stuff. Uh, I got like halfway through the machine. Uh, just ran out of time. Yeah. I did watch yeah. him on Hot Ones, and I watched him on uh, Hot Ones. You guys watch Hot Ones, right? Mm-mm. You don't? No, Mm-mm. But, uh, I, yeah, I watch Hot Ones. The, the oh, okay, yeah. It's, yeah. On, it's on First We Feast, the channel First We Feast. Where, uh, I love kind of, that show. It's so good. It's great. It's great. I think it's uh, – I can't remember the magazine that actually like runs it. That um, guy may be one of my favorite interviewers, and like he just sits there and eats chicken wings. I mean, you know, yeah, I don't and know he, what it and is he, about he's that guy. going through the same pain that they're going through, but he's just going through the questions to have, like ignore it somehow. And, but, um, he, but yeah, and that's can, what they do. He they does go it every through, week. It's crazy. Exactly, I mean, and so it. he's got to have scorch nonstop. I imagine, but <laughs> <laughs> but the show for for those that don't know, in JD present company. Hi. Um, <laughs> hey, hello, that's me. Uh, <laughs> the hot ones is is where the, he has celebrities on. Celebrities, I don't know how the fuck he got. Kevin Hart was on there for fuck's oh, sake. Wow. I don't know how he got these people huge on there. celebrities are on. This exactly, show, right? Brian Cranston, James Franco, Bert uh, wow. Reicher would be one of the like, like most under like unknown people like on this show. You yes, know, yeah. and he is a giant fan of the show he yeah. was like oh yeah man having uh dj khaled on there and bitching out after like the third wing that was hilarious they go my, a little bit like hot they increase the, the the scale the scale yeah the uh the scoville uh count the scoville level uh with each Every wing way. that they, that they okay. eat so it starts with like tabasco which is bitch sauce and yeah. and it, actually i think it starts with frank's which is even bitchier yeah and it works its way up uh, like sriracha, and then you uh, they have their own sauce, hot one sauce, and then they okay. go to all the way like the hottest sauce that's and on just America. Who can outlast? Or? Yeah, and they try they go through the whole interview, and if they last, then the thing is you can like make like a thirty second plug at the end of the show, plug oh. whatever you want to. Cool. Um, it's funny the interviewer like takes a bite and literally just launches into his question because he's just trying to not cry. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. He's got a great stone so face. A, so it's a distraction method, pretty much. Right. Yeah, okay. pretty much. But my point is, Burt Kreischer was on there. I think it was around the third to last wing he took off his shirt finally oh yeah. <laughs> of course of course he did I take that long <laughs> everything right. else i've seen him in, i don't think i've he ever literally seen popped his shirt. shirt off on the machine yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like as soon as he comes out hey guys how's it going shirts off did and you like get fuck? 15 minutes about my kids did right. you get to the part about uh, in the machine where he tells the story where he got that where he got that name no oh yeah i did you watch have the, to get this to is that not happening to. this is not happening uh he talked about uh a bear I watched that one where he talked about fighting a bear or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, for Hurt Bert, yeah. Right. And uh, what was the... And he, on Hot Ones, he told the story about the flying dildos. Yes, oh my god, flying dildos yeah. is so good in Amsterdam. Yes, it's so good. He told a bridge <laughs> version of it on Hot Ones. <laughs> Um, uh, and I, and the interviewer was just like, his mind was blown. Like his mouth just kept opening yep. wider and wider because he couldn't believe the fucking story at all. Um, I'm glad you're you guys, really, you'll really like his story about how he got the, his name, the machine. It was, it was about yeah. how he robbed a train with the Russian mob. It's really oh good. God, it's great. So fucking good. I've heard, I've heard like when he was on, this is not happening. Ari Shafir, or, or it might've just been, uh, the dude from hot ones was just like, oh yeah, that's crazy. The machine, this was like, he was promoting the machine. Yeah, uh, on Hot Ones, and he was like, "Yeah, you, you got to hear how I got the nickname." They just kept building it up in several places, so I really got to get to that part. 
Um, I ended around the part where he was talking to his kid about his kid thinking that they're in the dumb class. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you think <laughs> I would good. send you to school with daddy? <laughs> and then the mom's like, yeah, she's in the dumb class. I just want, I'm not going to tell her that. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> it's so great. Awesome. Uh, but I, I have to go with Dave Chappelle here. Uh, he is, we have to think of, of course, body of work. Because you still have, I got some pussy. Uh, you still. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said dirty work. That's not dirty work. That's Norm Macdonald. Yeah. Uh, Nor- I can't do a Norm Macdonald. Uh, <laughs> uh, Norm Macdonald. Uh, so <laughs> that was terrible. But he did the half baked. That's what it was. Oh, half yeah, baked. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, and then of course the uh, Chappelle show, which is still holds up. And he met, he references Key and Peele like. In his first stand-up special on Netflix that everybody needs to go watch, he's like, "Oh, oh yeah, I had to watch that. I had to watch my show for four years. For fucking Keith Peel doing it, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> which is so true. But his voice—he's got a voice of a generation, man. So um, I have to go with Dave Chappelle on this one. Okay. Yeah, sorry for going so long on that one, uh, but Bert, Bert Kreischer deserved his due. I'm glad you guys." Maybe watch his stuff. Good, yeah, good. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad we got to expose you to someone new. I'll keep it short since we, you know, we, we kind of we kind of hash it out. Dave Chappelle, man, he just came out two heavy hitters, yes. back to back, just a couple days ago, and not Go without watch controversy, him. which is amazing because that's his mo. Uh, and you'll laugh the entire time, especially during that second one. Uh, he moves forward for me, easy. I love Burt Kreischer, but uh, you know, it's Dave Chappelle. Come on. Yep. Done. Same for JD. Yep. Absolutely. Unanimous. And, and I love Burt Kreischer, man. That's definitely not a uh, not an insult to the guy at all. What I've uh, seen not, not is even absolutely bit. hysterical. And I want to see more of his shirtless body. Yeah. Because laughs, That's weird. laughs are a coming. It's not so much for what it is, it's for what it symbolizes. That's just, Dave ooh, I love that. Oh, even the dog <laughs> voted for Dave Chappelle. Even the dog voted for Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Good job, Goku. Yeah, Goku. That's right, everybody. My dog is named Goku. Hey, why don't you tell us how much you love Dragon Ball Z real quick, Jeff? Yeah, I watched it when I was a kid. <laughs> that's, it. that's all I got. That's the only attachment I got. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot what Goku even was. Like, is he? He's, what is that? He's the yeah. bald guy, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's it's right. a it's a green guy, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah I think he's nailed a green it. Guy. Yeah. Oh, is that the is that the pickle guy? The green? <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Could not. Be. When I went to the vet for the first time, they uh, with with Goku, they um they were like, yeah, we've got like three Gokus in here. That's a kind of a. So it's like a not not that common because like they get like a billion buddies, you know. What yeah. I mean? sure. But um, and he was like, "Yeah, we got another one too." And I was like, "Piccolo," because that's the only other name I knew. And then he <laughs> name dropped who it was, and I couldn't even recite it back to you. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, so at least you know a couple of Dragon Ball fans in the area okay. that named their dogs after that." That's cool. Weird. Right, weird I, feel, guys. I feel less weird about that. So the next the next matchup, uh, this is very interesting. This matchup, yeah. Um, Juggernaut Road Comics here, I think. I don't have the numbers. The page cut them off. Uh, so I can we... tell you. It's 7 and 10. Okay, 7 and 10. So number 10 seed is Joe Rogan. Mm. Uh, and number 7 seed is Patton Oswalt. And JD hey. starts on this one. Shit. Um, Sorry. I really wish Fuck. I could hear y'all's, <laughs> y'all's pitches. Because, um, I don't know, on paper, it's kind of a tough choice. They both. Kind of hit me on a different level. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've probably had more personal exposure to Patton Oswalt over the years. Like Joe Rogan, I've watched his most recent special, but I've never really listened to his podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, Missing out, man. Probably. Yeah, I know it's like it's, I know it's a commitment, but it's great. it's yeah. such a commitment, and like it's not you know it's not always funny. I mean, it's sometimes yeah. funny, but he'll yeah. have like serious people. He goes on into like social there. issues and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. it's more serious, you know. But um, you yeah. know, that, that doesn't mean they can't cut a rug or whatever. Right? Is that the right term? Can they joking? Or is that or is that a <laughs> cut the rug. Is that just dancing? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? <laughs> um, man, I th- I think I'm gonna vote for Patton Oswalt on this one actually, which I didn't think I was gonna do before this, but. I, I love the little guy. I love, I love, I love the little guy. He makes me he makes me laugh, and uh, he's got a good little vibe about him. He's like mm-hmm. a little comedic teddy bear. Yeah, he is. With funny jokes that understands nerds. Yes. Like, yeah, really. He's on the same page as all the nerds yeah. on the planet. And you said oh, yeah. this last episode, Kyle. It's like he, he mentions it without making you feel bad for either liking it or um, not knowing what it is at all. Like Absolutely. He's not, he's yeah. not gonna. He's not gonna chastise you for not knowing what the hell he's talking about. But it's still gonna be pretty funny. Who's so, that? Uh, 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 Brian Poussein, like him and uh, they're oh, the, the yeah. Kings of Road of. What is that comedy thing that they did with uh, Maria Bamford and Zach Galifianakis? 
Oh shit! I can't uh, remember the name of it, but I watched. Whatever. They, but they, they were, were like two together. of them. Yeah. yeah, like that. Those guys like used to play D and D together and stuff like that. Like uh, Brian Hussein and uh, Pat and I was like, those guys are nerdy as fuck. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, those guys speak to me on a, on <laughs> on a primordial level. That guy's so dry, man. I love him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he always sounds congested. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go a different direction here. Sorry, sorry to JD. No, oh, it's okay. Well, I guess you didn't really have a commitment to either one of these guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Joe Rogan on this. Cross um, the line, motherfucker. Patton Oswalt is spiritually aligned with me because he's a, he's a fellow cinephile. He's written a book on it for fuck's sake, and he talks about how he went to the movies like every day for I don't know if two years or something. And never missed a movie, and um, yeah, and he's he's a big time geek. Uh, as as you can see from, I'm only referencing things that he's been in, unfortunately, because I yeah. I can't remember his stand, like I've listened to his stand up, can't remember, can't remember it at all. I, I feel so bad about that. <laughs> um, but the th- I think the things he's been in has been I don't know has has affected me or left an impression on me more than his stand up yeah. personally at least. Um, but yeah, when that Parks and Rec thing when he did a a oh, yeah. what do you call that when you um, when you just filibuster. talk, filibuster. filibuster. Thank you. And he b- crossed over Star Wars and was it Marvel or something? Yeah, or it was Star yeah. Wars and Marvel. He's like, and then Thanos' glove reaches <laughs> and C three P. It's so fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh man, he's just riffing. They had to release an uncensored, like unfiltered, not, not uncensored, but just you know, uncut. an uncut version uncut of that. Edited, yeah, because he just doesn't stop. He like clearly thought this or out. Or yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, but Joe Rogan though has. More of it. Well, his stand up does resonate with me. I watched Triggered last year and really, really liked it. It was good. Um, and he does more for the, I guess you can call it the community of comedy, um, large, the larger community. Mm-hmm. He's like an enforcer, mentor ish. So I'm gonna go with Rogan on on this one. I know that puts us in a dead heat. So Kyle, you are, you're the decider. Ooh. Um. Hmm. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go Rogan on this one as well. I think we a lot of people forget about his early TV show, News Radio, which was really good. Oh, uh, man. I always just forget he was on it. Yeah. He's, 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 I mean, he's not like the funniest part of that show, but like no, he, he, Hartman and Dave it, uh, he, he, he adds into the funny for sure. You know, Phil Hartman's absolutely the funniest part of that <laughs> show. Andy, Andy Dick and uh, Mike Foley. Is even, that um, name? Yeah, Dave Foley. And, Dave Foley, and, um, thank you. Even um, what's her face? Kathy, uh, yes, Kathy Griffin. Great. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Um, and I never but, uh, remember the actress's name that plays. I uh, can't remember her either. Yeah. The girl from Maura Tierney. Maura Tierney from yeah. from like yeah. ER, and stuff? ER, yeah, Liar, Liar, and yeah. yeah, okay, Liar. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That was yeah. the same same woman. Good, good it, cast, man. Her. Good callback. It's a great cast. Yeah. Was he I, Ellen too? Who was Joe Rogan in Ellen too? Who am I thinking maybe, of? Maybe I don't know. The Ellen but, Ellen had a sitcom in like around yeah. the time of News Radio, maybe even after it. Dude, I don't know. If he was that'd be an amazing. I thought he was. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to have to go Joe Rogan for this one. I'm going to save maybe some juice for him later, so. Okay. I respect y'all's decision, I do. Rogues, Rogan's, Seth Rogan's brother moves on. Joe Rogue One. Joe Rogue One. (laughs) (laughs) Seth Rogan's brother. (laughs) I just want to talk about UFC. All right, so. (laughs) (laughs) So he was on uh, Hardball Mad TV. Who am I thinking of that was on Ellen? No, he wasn't on it. Jeremy Piven was on Ellen. Thank you, Jeremy Piven. I did. Weirdly, I confuse those guys. Yeah. They are like, yeah, they're very much alike in weird ways. Yeah. White balding dudes. That's just yep. all it was. High energy. <laughs> High energy. High, High energy. Balding. Right. Lord. It went from right. bad plugs to better plugs, at least, though. Right. You know, like for really him, dramatically. Least, which is good for Rogan, embracing his just saying yeah. "fuck it" masculinity and yeah. shaving his head and saying, That's what he, and he has "Battle is over." Yep. He's like, "Just get, do it." Yeah, exactly. There, bro. Like, right. What do you want to take? A hair from your ass? You don't want that. Yeah. Right. You don't want to, because Jeremy Piven then is the result. Right. Yeah, right. That's all I'm saying. Uh, what's the numbers on the next one, Kyle? Three and 14. Thank you, sir. So number 14 seed is, I don't know, honestly, I'm kind of sitting here asking how she ended up so low. Take Nataro is a number 14 seed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, versus the only, number... the only girl. Yeah, the only woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, number three. Sexist. Three seed, right? Yes. Mike Permiglia. Yeah, right. Mike Mike, the big ball. All right. <laughs> Mike Pahuski. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to get old. 
So I'm glad we're all on the same page. We've all watched Thank God for Jokes, the oh, most recent man. Netflix uh, stand-up comedy uh, routine, which was great. Um, when, oh man, he t- what was the story that he told? He, he performed a bunch of a front in front of a bunch of kids or something. Oh, oh yeah. Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. He gets up there and he goes, No, with the Muppets. That's what it was. And he's like, shit, or something like, fuck off. Oh, yeah, because he was was hired because he was a clean comic. He forgot his chair. (laughs) That's all it was. And he reenacted it from, like, the entire thing. It was so good. That's fantastic, man. So funny. So so they they don't even know me. I come out there. (laughs) They're like, Mike Birbiglia. And I just come out and go, Fuck! <laughs> Go back and get a chair. That's their first impression of him. Let me tell you the people who don't like hearing the word fuck. Yeah. <laughs> people who buy tickets to see a Muppet show and Muppets. <laughs> um, speaking of chairs. Oh my god. Tignataro has this bit that make that kills me. And it, it could be because of the simplicity in it. There's no layers. It's just She's just her. She just oozes funny. I'm, I don't mean to take over. Kyle's first. I'll, I'll talk about it a little first. bit. First, wow, that's crazy. Um, I like Tig. I like Tig a lot. Um, she's a person that I wish would put out like an hour of stand comedy every year because I know she's capable of doing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. She's that. She's that good of a. She's that good of a comedian. Uh, uh, but, uh, I got, man, I'm riding high on this Burbiglia stuff right now. This Burbig stuff is, uh, under my skin. Mm-hmm. Um, I get it. And, uh, I mean, I, mean, I gotta choose, I gotta choose Burbiglia on this one for me. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Uh, I guess I'm next. No, wait. No. JD's you're next. next. Okay. Shit. Well, shit. All right. I'm just going to mute the microphone really quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it kind of sucks you're not going to be able to make your lobby for TIG. No. Because, uh, I mean. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting for Mike Behugely. <laughs> um Dude, watching that, that most recent special was like going to comedy church. Like, yeah. I'm just sitting there just like, just just keep yeah. talking, man. And I, I even rewatched it since we recorded uh, the Top Ten episode. Mm-hmm. fucking wonderful man yeah, I think he's honestly the the best I've said this before he's the best working sta- uh, stand up comic that's a storyteller yeah yeah. Uh, and we have a couple in here like Bert, Bert Kreischer's one of them Ari, Schaefer, Ari Schaefer's one of them yeah I almost said Schaefer Schaefer uh, I don't know who the hell that is uh, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah Berbiglia though combines storytelling with pretty much genius level writing yeah uh, I, I don't know how he does stuff. it, and somehow circles it back around. Even when he has to take a break to improv a little, play off the audience, like he talks about tardiness in the beginning, and then two people actually oh arrive God. late. That was great. And then <laughs> that he, was genius. Then he calls yeah. back to that throughout the entire episode. Yeah. Even during the callback mm-hmm. thing. And then the dude that he talks to, and I don't know how he ended up talking to this one guy who yeah, was like what a hung jackass. up on the detail <laughs> about a woman cop. Oh yeah, I don't know how he was hung up on that detail, but uh, like he, the dude, was well, she gonna be a lady? Because you went from one comic, one comic who's you went from one guy who's one of the best storytellers ever to one guy who's one of the worst storytellers ever, who is literally like, "How did you get arrested? What happened?" So we we're in the woods, and he's like, "All right, I'm just, I'm done," and he just runs back <laughs> on stage. <laughs> you, just, you just don't know how to tell stories. We're yeah. fucking done with this. Yeah. Um. Oh man. This is one of this is the hardest round for me, but it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, <laughs> apparently not. I probably would have made an argument for Tig, but eventually voted for Berbiglia. But like, well, why, don't you, has why this... don't you make your argument for yeah. Tig? Yeah. Well, I was just, just gonna say, uh, Tig has this routine with a chair uh, that she. I don't know if she debuted it on Conan or she probably just tried it on the road and then said, "I'm just gonna do it on Conan." Okay. Uh, where she she's a great interview, by the way, because she just literally can sit there and not do anything, and people laugh. Mm-hmm. She just oozes comedy from her pores. She's great. Um, but she was... Oh, that she was a stand-up uh, routine. So she was just like, man, you know how some sounds just make you laugh? And she had a stool. She had the stool from her, you know... They give comedians a stool sometimes. Yeah, right. And she literally just drug it across the floor for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking funny! Is she making <laughs> eye contact with like an area or a specific person when she does no, it? she's just kind of looking around like... Like, right? Like, like, right? Isn't this funny? It's so fucking funny. And then she'll pause occasionally and be like, right? right? And then just keep dragging the fucking oh chair. God. Just when you think she's done, she'll go back to it and start dragging it in another uh, direction again. Oh, my God. It's so fucking funny. 
Um, I highly recommend people go to Netflix. I think she's got a documentary on there about her, uh, her, you know, her episode yeah. or whatever, yeah. like episodes. Yeah, you know, with her mom dying and she had C diff and then uh, cancer. Yeah. Um, and how she's uh, after that she's trying to adopt a kid. Uh, or I think first she tried to actually have a kid like herself and then they turn it into like an adoption or something i don't i don't know i can't remember the end of it but yeah. it's great and then there's one where she went on the road with another comic uh it's a documentary she went on the road with another comic and i can't remember his name but i as soon as i told you his name and you googled it you'd be like i know who that guy is he's great um he's hilarious they literally went to people's backyards and did stand up and oh, it was incredibly nice. awkward <laughs> it was as awkward as it sounds they went around the country and did it uh, some of them were like, you know, Southern trailer park stuff. And it was literally just like some, some of them were just like small patio spaces, uh, mm -hmm. at some dude's house. And it was incredibly awkward, but, um, man, she has a way with the crowd. She literally didn't even have to tell jokes out there. She can literally just talk to the crowd in a small setting like that. And that's her entire stand up. Yeah. It, it's, it's incredible. Um, shit. She's amazing. But yeah, I mean, Berbiglia though, I mean... God damn it. That but dude thanks, can structure bro. the fuck out of a show. Yeah. That dude has a stage play of a show. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. Um, Berbiglia goes through anyway, so who cares? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Tig needs Tig needs her proper credit. Right. Sure. And she's got a great show on Amazon that's pretty much based on her life called One Mississippi. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it got renewed. It's funny, though. It's got a lot of her awkward humor in it. Okay. Um, and like I said, the show I think it was a Showtime or HBO special. From a couple years ago. Everybody needs to go watch that. Again, monumental shit. <laughs> um, all right, so the next round is... Ooh, man, this is uh, this is interesting. This is actually very interesting. Six and 11. Thank you, sir. 11 C Jim... Jim Jeffries. Oh. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> don't be a cunt. Sorry. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's how he says it. Ah, you don't like it when I say the word cunt, do you? <laughs> Right. <laughs> the versus number six seed, uh, Bo Burnham. Man. I only said his name like that because I think he's like one of the smartest comedians to ever live. I'm actually starting this one. Um, my, I can't tell my vote's going towards Bo Burnham. Oh, no shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah he no. was your number three, right? Two. Damn. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, not only is he one of the smartest writers and performers, he's he's a great songwriter. Yeah. And when you have to rap comedy in your songs, I mean, that's just goddamn impossible. I tried it once. I wrote a song as Bruce Wayne trying to sing that he's not Batman. <laughs> and it didn't really work out that well. Even though that's a funny premise, but it didn't work out that well. Dracula musical. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Dracula musical. Just put a fucking song, Peter. Just, just out of context. <laughs> Die. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I love Bill, uh, when he gets to the production, Bill Hader plays uh, Van Helsing, and the look yeah. on his face, oh, when he's flying and stabbing, right? not, yes. to, not to spoil the play at the end yeah. of the movie for anybody. And when he's literally shouting the song yeah. at the yeah. end. <laughs> it's great. Peter looks at him like, what the fuck? It's so good. It's awesome, man. Uh, did you watch that recently or something? Yes. Yeah, very, me too. Very. Yeah. I watch that like once a month. <laughs> I love forgetting it's Sarah like, It's like a cycle. That's it's one of those things. Great comedy, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where, like, uh, that and Superbad, I watched them for so many year, like, years consecutively, nonstop, regularly. Yeah. And then I just dropped off, and I revisited them, like, in the last month. It's like, it's like a bike. You just yeah, get, you're you right, just get you're right like, back on it. And you're like, yes, this is what that, this is what the last feel like. Ah. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, just eat them up. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Bo Burnham, though, he's, uh, he's a goddamn genius, man. I have yet to see one special of his where I went, I think, that, I'm pretty sure this dude's, like, one of the smartest dudes alive. And once again, we have a Con like a Conan esque dude, uh, who he didn't go to Harvard or anything. He started when he was like a kid, eighteen, and he's like twenty two now or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he's doing the stuff that he's doing. I can't even wrap my head around it. So I'm gonna have to go with Bo Burnham on it, even though I I do have bad respect for Jim Jeffries. Cool. Uh, Kyle's next on this one. I hate to be a shutout, but I'm gonna have to go Bo Burnham as well. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, for all the reasons that you said, uh, I actually went back and watched that that uh, I think it was his first special. Like recently, like this this week or whatever, whatever was it on his Netflix? one was. Yeah, uh, Netflix has what, and then uh, the one that's just what, and then a period. Oh, that's right. It's what. Yeah, I watched what. That's not his first one then. No, it's know. not. That's like his second one, I think. Okay, um, okay, yeah, that one was really good. Oh my god, uh, that, that one. I'd the, only had seen that one one time, good. so like it all felt really fresh to me, and 
<laughs> That's the thing so with him. Funny. His jokes are rapid fire. Yeah. So like, if you watch it again, you're like, I don't remember you that. Totally missed yeah. that because you were laughing. Yeah. Through it. Yeah. Yeah. His song at the beginning is so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> prolonged eye contact. That's just my favorite. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I love it. So JD, where would you have voted, man? Working through it, I mean, I had I have Jim Jeffries in my top list, but right. the only reason why I've never really gotten into Bo is just I don't think I've ever really been in, in the proper mood when I've it is kind of gotten a, introduced to his stuff. I've had people explain. You're not the first person to tell me that. Yeah, uh, I I was trying to get somebody at one of my old jobs into him, and he was like. I was in the first five minutes, and then I was like, "All right, I really have to pay attention to this." I yeah, can, I just can't do it right now. Yeah, you know, he's like, "I got to go do something else." You know what I mean? For sure, I got to be able to turn my brain off. Yeah, you got to get up. real, real deep into him mm-hmm. in his yeah. thought process, and like you said, it, it you almost have to rewatch it. Yeah, to really get the full thing. Maybe not immediately. So, no, you kind of have to let it sink in a little not bit. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think I would have held it against him because yeah, he he's a much better comedian at what he does than mm-hmm. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries just telling funny jokes with an Australian accent and saying, cancel out. And he uses and he, his voice he for, funny, uh, he, he uses, uh, he knows the power of his voice. Yeah. Of his, uh, his own celebrity and yeah. that some people for some reason hold value over it, uh, which is kind of ridiculous in the world of comedy, but yeah. they do, man, they do. That's, you know, he does it, Sarah Silverman do it. They use their voice for causes. Yeah. Uh, massive respect to him for doing that because he's not American. Yeah, he for sure. shouldn't give a shit. Yeah. But he does. I feel like a lot of people in the public eye right now that, like are really strongly vocal about America and hit yeah. it on the nose. They're not American. Him telling John Pierce Morgan to fuck off, by the way, was oh, amazing. Yeah, was amazing. Did yeah. you see that, Kyle? What was it? Where Jim Jeffries told Pierce Morgan to fuck off, like right to no. his face. Yeah. It was on Bill Maher. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. And Pierce Morgan was talking about the travel ban. He's like, "Well, what's going on with the what? The, what, the travel ban's not that bad." Uh, uh. And great. and Jim Jeffries is like, "Just fuck off, Mike. Just fuck right off. Give him uh, a finger and shit." It's, it's so yeah, funny. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So definitely no disrespect to Jeffries, but no, and objectively legit, probably legit is great to too. Yeah. 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 The next the the round that Burnham and uh, Burnham is in next is going to be fucking hard. All right, so the next round we have Louis C.K. versus Daniel Tosh. All right. And J.D. starts this one. Woo. Um, damn, dude. Um, hey, you were last on the last one. That's, that's how it works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's formatting? All right. Hey, we made it through the first round. I didn't mess one up, so we're... Yeah, we're so far, we're on track. I wrote them down this time. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to vote for Louis C.K., man. I mean, I, I just don't think... Uh, I don't think Tosh is, to me now, what he used to be, whereas Louis C.K., I feel like, has just grown. Yeah. 100% from day one. Um, I'm just more interested in Louis C.K.'s type of comedy. Yeah, me too. Really. I hear like, you. Tosh is funny... But it's intelligent in its own way, but the subject matter is not always intelligent in nature. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he, yeah. There's a lot of he says stupid things in a, in a very it, funny like, way. That's not, right. I don't really care about right. that. Right. Very juvenile. Whereas Louis C.K. Is, is, I wouldn't mind being that guy. He talks like about grand, grander things, bigger uh, ideas yeah. in, a, in a much more immature For way. For sure. Which yeah. I really love. Yeah. yeah. Like talking, when he talks about the way that we use our language... That was hilarious. Yeah. It's like, do you know what that word means? It means you laugh so hard that you literally went insane. Yeah. That's not what... Oh, <laughs> and what they were saying was something like, uh, oh, um, I saw Cindy the other day. Cindy, that's hilarious. How the fuck is that hilarious? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, he, he's just a very aware guy yeah. of, of the current culture. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Louis C.K. I'm next, and I'm going Louis, too. Um... I've loved every single one of Daniel Tosh's stand-up co- uh, comedy specials. I think there's been three of them, and they're all great in yeah. their own way. People really need to watch that. Don't watch Tosh.0. Oh. Unless you're like into just mindless television where you can do laundry while you're fucking watching TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm talking about if you want to be exposed to Tosh's best stuff, watch his stand-up. Um, but yeah, Louis C.K. is great every single time. He's been in the game for a long time. Uh, I recommend watching his other stuff. His show is one of the best comedies ever written. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's so good. It's human, but meta and also surreal. It's great. And go watch his, uh, his eulogy at George Carlin's funeral. Uh, oh, yeah. if you don't, if you don't cry out of every orifice of your body, you're not human. It's, it's, it's <laughs> why, great. Why are you crying out of your butt while watching that? <laughs> Bad taco? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going with Louis C.K. Would you have made it a uh, a sweep, Kyle? 
I would have shut that bitch down. Yeah, All totally. Right. Uh, Louis C.K. Cool. LCK moves on to the semis, which is what I got in my pants right now. All right, so the next... Just went from six to midnight. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next round is... Tom Sig... 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 Versus... Sig... 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 Alright, and uh, Kyle is first in this one. I don't know which way you're going to go. I don't know. God, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think. steer us out of this like racist thing we keep on falling back into with these two guys. So. <laughs> we have another white dude in the uh, files. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're back to Sakura again. We can start being uh, racially insensitive. <laughs> oh, that. Uh, that too, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, yeah, dude, I gotta, I mean, it's, it's easy for me. Tom Sakura all, all day, because he was my number one. Um, you know, oh, so. So yeah, it's it's uh it's Tom Segura for me. I was listening to a podcast yesterday with him and his wife, and they talked about uh, this girl who uh, made a YouTube video, and she sticks her fingers in her buttholes and smells them, and they all they did is talk about that the entire fucking episode, <laughs> and it was fucking riveting. It was the most hilarious. It was so it was the most hilarious one hour of podcasting I've listened to in a long time. That's funny. Uh, so yeah, man, that guy gives me lots of laughs. I gotta go Segura. Cool. I'm all about it, and uh, JD is next, dude. That Segura bit reminds me a little bit of the the Burt Chrysler or Chrys- Chrysler. Chrys- Chrysler. 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 He's your vehicle. <laughs> the Burt Hyundai. Burt. <laughs> Burt Daimler Chrysler. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, when, when he's talking about how they keep sticking their finger up their butts and putting it to the dogs, like he doesn't know, he keeps going back. So that for, if that's it for an hour, I'm totally down. I gotta listen. To that. Um, I am also inclined to go with my number one, uh, leaving the fate of this matchup in the hands of Jeff. And I think Jesus. I know how he's gonna vote. But look, dude, I love Aziz and sorry. Um, like you said earlier, the intimate moments for a sensual evening is one of the best specials that I think I've seen recently at all. It'd probably make my top ten. Um, for sure, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I love the dude, but I, I love Tom Segura, too, so I'm really I'm kind of content either way, man. I'm glad Segura made our list. I'm glad he was somebody's number one, for sure. Yeah, I'm super glad, too, about that, uh, because I'm going to go Segura. Yeah, I knew nice. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to Aziz. <laughs> Damn! Damn. I just got voted out in tournament champions, but I guess I'm not. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna have to go Segura. Uh, I like I've said before, I, I just love this dude's personality. I poop love jokes. his jokes, just good poop jokes. It, Great the poop best, jokes. yeah, the best, the most in the juvenile business. comedian on this list, I would say. <laughs> Like in his first like special. his jokes, he's just like they're like, just so they're, man. Like he doesn't give a shit what he's talking about. <laughs> I love his uh, his little bit about going to a doctor. I think it was in one of the uh, first, me too. The first one. Yes, yeah. yes, it's so good. It's so good. He's like, his I doctor knew is just it treating wasn't him like an asshole. Like it's I knew so it wasn't going to be good. Yeah, but it's like I didn't expect you to be like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I really have to refresh myself on his stand-up, but I know he's got a couple specials out there people can watch on Netflix. Need to watch the second one again. I know the first one like the back of my hand. I know, like the back of my butthole, and I haven't seen it, so. Well, I don't know. I, I was don't just know that well. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I chose the butthole, but you know. All right. uh, so the next matchup, uh, right. I'm going to start actually. It's uh, David Chappelle. 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 David Chappelle. <laughs> versus. That French guy, right? Versus Joe Rogan. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, so uh, this one's actually relatively easy for me. I mean, because, um, I mean, I, I do like Rogan. Um, I mostly like him for what he does in the in this industry, in particular, um, more than for his stand up. Even though I do enjoy stand up, but uh, Dave Chappelle, man, he's a he's a goddamn juggernaut in comedy right now. And I have said, I, I know, I know that people say this a lot, and they're kind of like, is he really a voice of generation? Is he really fucking yes? Deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think and so. Yeah. I don't think and that's a valid question. All right, and he's continuing to prove it with his first special. He talks about previous generations, and he's like just he's old manning it up and just talking about care bears yes. which is an amazing bit by the way everybody oh needs to watch it's so that. good yeah. they used yeah. to shoot shit out of their love <laughs> they out of their chest literal I mean, love out of their fucking chest uh, yeah, he's they like, just I go around caring love on some chest but <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking funny oh my god yeah <laughs> and then you know he totally just goes stereotypical old man to a kid in the crowd and he's like you know, like when I if somebody uh, would call me on the phone, I, I wouldn't know who it is, and I have to answer that motherfucker. And, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I remember that. I mean, yeah, me too. but yeah. at the same time, that's such an old man sentiment. But I mean, that's because 
He's a voice of his generation, man. It's, yeah. I mean, it, it, it would sound weird coming out of another comic. Like, if Bill Burr was like, hey, yeah, you gotta answer the phone. It's fucking, yeah. Uh, remember, remember that? <laughs> What's still? What's still? You'd be like, of course Bill Burr's saying that. That's his baddest shtick the entire time. But now Chappelle's <laughs> at this corner where he's like, I'm getting older. Um, I don't know. It's just a great special. I gotta go with uh, Chappelle. Cool. So, uh, Kyle's next. I love Joe Rogan. I love Joe Rogan more than most things in this world. Uh, but it's Dave I Chappelle know. all day for me. You know, oh, nice. uh, Dave Chappelle is just a, just a way more like co- I don't even want to call it complex. Like his jokes, I don't think there's anybody in the world who doesn't like Dave Chappelle. I've never met someone. You know, maybe oh I didn't write the Chappelle show, or whatever. But like people find him funny. People have yeah. found him funny. People have laughed at him at some point yeah. in time or another. So if you interest. haven't, please comment so I know to like un- remove you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I, he's just, he's he's easily the most likable like comedian like of all time. I mean, like he, maybe not like his actual personality or whatever, but like just his straight up comedy. Um, and yeah, I mean, I gotta go Dave Chappelle. He's, he is the voice of a generation. He, mm-hmm. um, he's one of the greats. He's one of the greats, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Super glad he made the decision to have uh, put the effort forth uh, towards a career resurgence. And I like that in his special when he talks about where is the line. And he's like, uh, you know, the other day, uh, Dancing with the Stars called me. And I was like, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. I love that. It was so hilarious. That was or, so or the time where he's like, we were at uh, some party and uh, it was me and Chris Stuckard uh, t- standing next to each other. And you got to understand at that time that was like seeing yeah. Bigfoot riding a unicorn. <laughs> right. <laughs> And now OJ. And then OJ went to picture with us. Yes. And we were like, nah, because yeah. both of our careers we both are too each other said, nah, man. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. Ooh, he tells a story. I can't control myself right now. He tells a story about meeting OJ. I'm sorry for spoiling oh this fucking God. special for anybody. But when he's like, man, OJ was great. And he's telling us, he said, it was great to meet you, gentlemen. You guys have been really, really nice to me and very welcoming. I appreciate you and your hospitality. And he left. Shook all our hands and he left, and it was great. And after he left, turned around and said, and he went, That guy did all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best payoff. Was that encounter number two or number three? That was like three, I think. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I remember the fourth one was like, Oh, I forgot. Oh, and, and yeah. that was the one in the restaurant with the record executives, right? Uh, yeah. I think the, so. Not record executives, whatever. Oh, uh, like managers or something managers. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Suits. I love that. By the way, that was great because all the smoke machine filled up and the poster was coming down. Yeah. And he's about to leave and he's like, I forgot. I forgot the, <laughs> the name. Yeah, but you still see five minutes left. You're like, yeah. I know something's coming. Forgot the OJ thing. <laughs> it's funny, man. Oh, that's great. I that's love Chappelle. Uh, JD, where have you? Where oh, would you have gone? No question going with Chappelle, man. Nice. So I'll, I'll save. I'll save a little bit of my juice for the next round for him because that bit he had yeah, we, we might need it, maybe, but not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just um, I was going to listen to it, and then I just went on about living my life. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else I can get you? <laughs> yeah, it's mundane. It's great. It's great. Yeah, I right? know. I know. <laughs> I would love to get you weed right How now, weird Joey, is it that Jonah but I'm Hill at my is... fucking place of work right now. You would know because you called me at my place of work. All right. Uh... <laughs> Shut up. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Forgetting Sarah Marshall's <laughs> greater body. <laughs> All right. So the next round, uh, JD goes first. We have Bo. Ooh. We have the Battle of Bees. We have Blue Burnham versus Mike Blue Wow. Blue. Um, that was the most fun round to say. <laughs> I got to say. It just rolls off the tongue. Mike Blue Man. <laughs> Makes me laugh. I don't know why. All right, uh, I'm gonna pop open a cold one while you're thinking on this. Do oh it. hell yeah! <laughs> you're supposed to do two at once, and you're actually drinking it. <laughs> um, man, I, I'm leaning towards uh, just because he's he's a little more a little more known for me. Like, I, obviously, I respect Bo Burnham, but. Um, Dude, I like Mike Birbiglia a lot. I think mm-hmm. I think like you've pointed out multiple times, he is is probably one of the best storytelling yeah. stand ups in the game in the conversation ever. Yeah. In the conversation forever. In the conversation. But certainly 100%. I would say on this list probably. Yeah. Um Bo, on the other hand though, I mean two totally different styles of comedy, yeah, two right? Two totally different Woo! styles. But Boy, I tell um, you. I, on paper there's no reason why I shouldn't like Bo Burnham. Mm-hmm. So I don't want maybe to... a little too fast paced for uh, for anybody that might have might partake in certain yeah. things. Yeah, po- possibly. <laughs> hey, what is that supposed to mean? What are you trying to po- say? Possibly. What is this? Some <laughs> kind of smoke circle? 
By the way, we're going to talk. Remember Louis C.K.'s bit about the last time he got high? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. With the yeah. kids? Yes. Yeah, the kids. That was the, the last show. time I smoked, like, legit verbatim. I was like, that's why I don't smoke anymore. He just literally spelled it out for everybody. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. No, he, he does nail it. Right. He absolutely so he nails it. I just start staring, and I'm like, I'm staring too much. I got to start counting. One, two, switch. One. Oh, God. I remember, oh, I, I remember what that was like. That. <laughs> It's an adorable feeling to have. I remember that. It's, it's just cute. I know. It's what, so I, cute. That's, come on. Where you're like, dabs for days, bitches. <laughs> if they're uh, not face melters, I don't want them. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to go for Berbiglia just, I, I know him and he is a heavy hitter in the industry. So yep. I don't, I don't feel bad not giving Bo Burnham probably the proper respect he had. He, right. He's earned just cause I haven't seen his stuff. So, um, Berbiglia wins the better than the bees for me. But scoop a do. Uh, so I'm next on this tough. one and this isn't, I mean, this should be very, very easy for me. Cause Bo Bur- if I look at my list, Bo Burnham is higher than ben- Mike Berbiglia's script. So, <laughs> I'm just going to go even worse with this name as we go along. Never get it right. <laughs> um, but even though this is the most subjective list we've ever made, all, all three of us, I'm going to have to go objectively with Mike Rabiglia, the guy that connects with people, I think, uh, more on a, on a human level. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes Burnham just feels like out of this planet. <laughs> little alien. <laughs> little alien. Oh, God, a little bit. yeah. Um, I think it's great. I think it's genius. Uh, he's way ahead of his years, certainly. Like he's sh- he's doing stuff a fifty year old comedian would dream of doing in their in the prime of their comedian. And when uh, he shows up, career. like in Parks and Rec and like other shows, it's like that. Oh, he's yeah. fucking hilarious, you know. And like, you know so he wrote funny. those songs too. That's what's I, so absolutely, great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was so good as that dick mom, and like just shitting, shitting on his mom when she's yep. there. And oh my god, it's so I great. Completely forgot about that one. He was such yep. a dick he's such a in that. shithead. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's funny because those country songs he makes fun of in that in his recent stand up make happy where he makes fun of arena country and he's pretty much just doing that in yeah. Parks and Rec. It's so good. Um, obviously, I love Bo Burnham. I've I've talked about him ad nauseum on this podcast. But Berbiglia, more than just being a great storyteller in the medium of stand up, whether it's a, in a cir- circular theatrical way or a regular, I'm in a bar and there's a stool behind me and I'm just whatever doing regular stand-up yeah uh he's great in that medium but dude in the medium of film um great filmmaker and he's got many more in him i know that for a fact Uh, i'm excited to see what else he does um so i'm gonna have to go with verbiglia kyle where would you have voted for bigs for me oh okay cool shut out shut the fuck out but scoop but scuba now uh, moves on (laughs) so the next round we have <laughs> uh, we have Louis C.K. versus Tom. Should we do it? Cigarette. Cigarette. Hey. Everybody's gonna like go. How the fuck do I Google that? They never said his name right once. <laughs> hey, uh, Tom uh, Cigarette. Oh my god. This is the worst. Oh, Alright. We are racist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is where Kyle starts. I'm last, so my vote doesn't matter in any of this one. <laughs> oh, man. It's tough. God damn it. It's a um, tough one. In the vein of objectivity. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to go Louis C.K. I love Tom Segura. I'm a big Tom Segura hype right now, man. But Louis right. C.K. has done so much. Like not that not to like to say that the body of work is is most important in quantity or whatever, but like if you wanted to fall in love with someone tonight, you would get so much bang for your buck with Louis C.K. because yes. there's so much content out there. Yeah, you yeah. could go you could go look up two shows that he stars in, multiple shows that he's written for, uh, you know, all these different stand-up specials. Uh, you know, you could get so much bang for your buck. Uh, and yeah, Tom Segura's got a kick-ass podcast and he's got a couple specials or whatever, but like that journey kind of ends there, you know? Um, so, uh, Louis CK just kills it, man. And like, he, um, he's just on another level. He's just on another level. Like, you know, it's, it's totally crazy that he's, um, he's as capable of doing what he's doing. He's such a trendsetter and everything. So yeah, Yeah. it's Louis CK, Louis CK for me. It's gotta be upsetting too for, uh, comics of, uh. 
up and coming or whatever because they're like this fucking guy's never gonna run out of steam how the fuck am i gonna yeah. be the next louis ck yeah, well, yeah exactly. he's still him yeah <laughs> because I, I truly like you're never even gonna be halfway to their catalog there's only enough room for like 200 like super famous working comedians you know like someone's kind of yeah. gonna get popped like bumped off like there's not enough room for all that you know like that's why people kind of yeah. stay in their hometowns and everything but uh they do their own brackets yeah, yeah <laughs> that's what exactly. they do they, you know, all the comics in the world get together they do their own brackets and they're uh, like alright you're, you're you've been tour, bumped you're off <laughs> uh, so your vote's for Louie 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 and JD is next alright um, well I'm in the vein of objectivity <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shove a needle and pump some drugs into it I'm going Tom Segura no uh, no 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 uh, Louis C.K. For sure, and it's because of his amazing hot body of work. Yeah, oh, wow, I like that. You did yeah. a switcheroo there. Great. Switcheroo. You, you had my shamel on me with your vote. That was great. <laughs> Never gonna get it. Um, yeah. All right, so my vote doesn't matter. I was gonna vote Tom Segura, but you know, whatever. You were not. <laughs> <laughs> you were not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, whatever. You know, you guys want to go in the obvious. All right, <laughs> guys, I'm going a little. Hey, this, is, this, is the time to, this is the time to bring up someone new, and you guys fucked it up. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was going a little John C. Riley. Hey, uh, what's this I hear about you guys like pronouncing Tom Segura's name wrong? <laughs> I mean, that's like really racist. Like you, should, you guys should stop. That, I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I just do not appreciate that at all. Thing with Tom Segura. All oh, right, that's I'm working on Al Pacino. Sorry. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, working, working on an output. I can't do it. I can't, no, can't fucking yeah, do it. I would, no, I would bail. Pacino. <laughs> no, uh, uh, don't be doing that shit. All right. Just got to put the time in. No, that's terrible. Louis the CK. Going Le, to the finals. Le CK. All right, so the next round, I go first in this son of a bitch. Oh. Uh, we're going to have Dave DeVay. I think it's pronounced DeVay, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> DeVay. DeVay. Chapella. Chap, Chapella, Chap Lips, Chap Chap versus Mike Big Scoop Doom Dow. Uh, so I go first on this one. God damn, this is this God is the damn. worst. Um, actually, it's not that bad. I'm gonna go with Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you try to make it like <laughs> it feels bad. It feels bad it on feels paper, right? And then in your head, you're like, oh wait, Dave Chappelle, right? Duh, yeah. of course, right. Yeah. We can't forget that uh, outside of Chappelle's show, um, and we got to remember how much of a backlash there was when he left that show. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't mean from Comedy Central. I mean from his fans, like going, fans, oh, yeah. he's going to go to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> like being entitled and everything. Isn't um, uh, it related to that tantrum that he was talking about in the first special? Uh, when he left the show? What? Well, I, I thought he had like a very public, um, or at least a widely spread outburst on stage. And that was, like, right near the end of all the Chappelle Show shit. Like, that was one of the things that kind of pushed him over the edge. I thought that was later. Okay. Because I, thought I, remember, that, I thought that's when he came back. Yeah, yeah. that was, like, okay. a show where okay. he went to, like, an improv. Something along okay. the lines of an improv. And they started booing him. And he was like, I just got too high. Like, and as he said in the show, yeah. I got too high. Yeah, he made it really funny. Right, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, they t- they did. Now, they said they booed me off stage. They booed me. But I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't leave the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Um. Yeah, we can't forget though his uh his his earlier stand up though is oh man it's still great oh man yeah. it's still great I still reference his Bill Clinton jokes about because Bill Clinton was still in office holy shit uh, when he talks about Bill Clinton getting his, getting his dick sucked as he says <laughs> and um, he's like uh, the economy good all right we at war or anything what's going on uh, Michael get in here <laughs> what else is he gonna do right <laughs> that was a great bit I love I love that bit. Uh, there's there's much more too after that one, and then you have the one in um, uh, that one was killing him softly, right? I think that was the first one. Yeah, and then the second That's one right. I can't remember the name of. For what it's worth, I think maybe. And then that was where the stand up kind of stopped, and then he was doing the show at the same time. Yeah, because uh, I remember for what it's worth, he was kind of like, uh, hopefully I'm saying the name right. Um, he's talked about people telling him doing the Rick James bit to him, and he's like fucking hate that. You know, he's yeah. telling him, uh, yeah. So he's already starting to get disillusioned with the show. Um. And the drama that it brings by that point. Anyway, I'm obsessed with this history of Dave Chappelle. Uh, Mike Rubiglia still got a lot more, lot, lot, of, lot of gas in the tank. So yeah. uh, I'm going to go with Chappelle on this one. Okay. Uh, and Kyle is next. Mm, I would really like to choose Mike here, man. But I, uh, I got to go Chappelle. Chappelle had way more laughs for me in these last couple specials. Uh, he's, um, he's just a special guy, man. He 
dance is a very dangerous line when he starts talking about, uh, you know, Bill Cosby's done a lot of good. He raped some girls. <laughs> <laughs> he does a done good job a of, of good setting too, that up. He, yeah, it it is story. so right. funny, though. Yeah, like, it, it is. is so fucking hilarious that, like, and that that was one of my my, my more favorite moments from both of those specials was just, like, Imagine that chocolate he doesn't ice give cream a fuck. raped 53 girls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! That, that would be so like you terrible. forty years later figuring out Kevin Hart raped fifty women, yeah. and then he's like, "And I'll remind you, I'd be remiss, allegedly." Like he, <laughs> yeah. he, he does have to throw that in there, which I, I like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just funny. Like he was like, even around number thirty, I was like, "Come on, man." There's, yeah. Exactly. There's, exactly. there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I mean, maybe a dozen of them, but not, not, not maybe, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. Yeah, there's was clearly so... gonna be. Um, there's clearly going to be some buttons that he pushed that people are not going to be happy about hearing yeah. when they when the whole world finally starts. But when, to... he, when he was like, when he was like, and that woman like reached out and goes, "Women suffer," and he goes, "I know, I know. Believe me, I know." And it was just so funny because yeah. like it's it's relevant, you know. It's like right. we all know For that sure. that things suck, you know. Like, and I've heard under- things that he said. I've talked to people that I used to work with or currently work with about um, the things that he said, but he says it in a funny way. I've had conversations like that with people um, mm-hmm. in terms of like when people compare suffering and he did it in a second special. We talked about Jews and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I said Jews like it's not a direct, I mean, I depends on how you, I guess how Louis C.K. says it. You, you just put a little stank on it and suddenly it's offensive. Jews. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I think, I think delivery and context yeah. really matter with that word. Right. But if you just say, oh, yeah, the Jews, you know, the nice Jews come yeah, by. And... Nice Jews. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's always Sonny has a very funny thing At about that point, this, too. Like, just... Ooh, stop stop emphasizing on Jews. Just say the Jews. And it's like, yeah, those Jews. No, you can't say those Jews. That's like, the uh, right thing, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So the finals, uh, JD has the inenviable task of going first <laughs> where we got uh, Louis C.K., the uh the oppressing white man versus dave Chappelle. how are you gonna vote on this one? Oh my god yeah why'd you set it up like that that's so <laughs> fucked up you're an asshole sorry <laughs> i know this is our number one and number two seed going head to head pretty much yeah, whatever you pick your no, racist uh, jd uh, <laughs> well man well, let I, me tell you i've been sitting on porch thinking about this one for a long time you. um Shit, man, Dave Chappelle has has been a part of my life for a really long time. Like I remember him even in uh, little bit roles in movies, um, like Blue Streak. Do you remember that? No. Oh yeah. Stupid oh, movie my, with Martin Lawrence. Blue Streak? He is the guy. I don't that remember Martin, him in it. I remember the movie. He um he's the guy that Martin Lawrence has to break out of jail. Yeah. Um. So he's like that little um, bit funny character that's gotcha. around for like fifteen minutes of the movie. He did a bit part um, in something else. Con Air, dude. Con he's Air. The guy that that's sets right. The fucking Indian guy on fire, and he's like, "Sorry about this, Cochise." Like. Uh, and then he ends up getting, I think he's the one that's, uh, um, yeah, he's the guy that gets stuck in the plane wheel that Cameron Poe writes the note on and kicks down and lands on that guy's car. I can't believe you called him by his, uh, by his character's name. Cameron Poe. Cameron Poe. Yeah, Robin Hood Men in Tights was the first thing I saw him in. Oh, yeah. fuck, dude. I completely White men that. can't jump. That was a joke that that's I remember awesome. from that. Yeah. Yeah. Where a dude tried to jump on a horse and he fell. Yeah. Oh, white man can't jump. Yeah. He <laughs> played crazy. Achu. Remember that? Yeah, true. <laughs> Man, th- this is a really even matchup, though. Like, when you consider you got two veterans with a really strong overall career, um, both had a successful TV show. Shit, very, man. Yeah, very successful. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that voting for Chappelle right now is going to just stir shit up later. So let's do it. I'm going to vote for Dave Chappelle over Louis C.K. And and it's because of the new specials that tipped it. That tipped it for me. It's because you know I'm yeah. next, motherfucker. Oh. Uh, all right, so. Just want to hear some, we're gonna we're gonna make this some a, good we're gonna make this a juggernaut of a final. Cause I'm gonna go ahead and go with Louis. Okay. God uh, damn it! <laughs> God. You fuckwad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing, uh, Louis. I know that Chappelle made great, lasting, impactful stand-up and television show show singular yeah. with Chappelle show. Um, I, it's not quantity over quality. Like Louis made more of his show and everything, but uh, I mean that's just one of my favorite shows. Yeah, ever made because even in the most surreal, like the, the one episode where he had like bad dreams and he kept showing the dreams in the show and they just got progressively weirder to where you're just like, it's basically like lead, the entire show Legion. <laughs> 
basically. Which, by the way, everybody should go see. The, you should go watch that show if you're not watching it now. I don't it's know. Great. It's yeah. Do you hey? Do you have not enough confusion in your life? Yeah. Check this show out. <laughs> yeah. And that last episode, I I will never ever forget uh, of that last. Did you see it, Kyle? Yes. Did you, JG? You not didn't current. see it. Not current. Oh my god. Sorry. Oh man. I'm bad. There's just a, I mean. I'm going to remember it for um, maybe a few years. In the pantheon of TV as it stands currently. Okay. It's just one of my favorite sequences that they've ever done on television. Maybe I'll bear which, with Which it one, weekend. vaguely, which one are you talking about? Uh, there's a lot of uh, music in it. <laughs> Covering the outside of my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the shield part? Uh, no, there's just a They're lot of music. About? It's like a 15-minute sequence, and there's just a lot of music. And uh, mm. very little to none, no dialogue. Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, this uh, yeah, this okay, yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. I, I even want to say the word, but I'm like, no, that would ruin it. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good, JD. Cool. You can put your headphones back on. Yay. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, people need to go watch that fucking show. It's great. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go with Louis because uh, his show, uh, man, it is, it is absolutely relatable on every level, and of course, Chappelle's show is too, with a uh, focus on um racial commentary um but in a way it puts it put things in a way i mean at least when i saw it i was still in my formative years like you guys were and i was watching it going oh all right i didn't know people thought of things that way or whatever you know what i mean like kind of opened my eyes to things um but and you know with this with a comedic slant to it which totally worked in the show's favor of course um chappelle again i mentioned chappelle's got great stand-up louis has like eight fucking great stand ups. So, yeah, I mean, it's true. They're all nonstop great. And just when you try to pigeonhole him into a certain certain realm or genre of comedy, oh, that's the guy with the kids that he fucking hates. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. And then he does a special that no, like none of his kids are in at yeah. all. He starts talking about living in this building where like he, he just doesn't dress like appropriate. Like he dresses like a hobo sometimes when he feels yeah. like shit. <laughs> and uh, he was like, I noticed that this guy was, you know, when he talks about um, picking a fight with a guy where he knows that he's, Louis knows that he's in the right and the other guy's in the wrong. Yeah. And that's just a great, ah, man. And then he, so he focuses on the mundane eventually, you know, and he, he just, he, he knows how to change up his routine. He throws it out once a year and starts fresh. George Carlin did it. He learned from him. He's a student of George Carlin. Um, you just really got to watch his eulogy for Carlin because it's. I it's will. great. And when he learned about how Carlin did his stand-up and how he re- not didn't recycle anything, like, you know, after a year, threw it out, started fresh, that changed the in- his entire It's going to be really liberating, it actually. everything about the way he did comedy. And um, and I remember him saying that he, he just did jokes, like, about airline food. Like, Yo, you ever noticed this, that, third? <laughs> he did used to do jokes about that. And then he did a joke about leaving his, uh, his uh, he did a joke about leaving his, like, baby in a dumpster or something. Oh my God, and yeah. and the, all the crowd at the eulogy just went oh, and he was like, and then everybody made that sound, and I was like, I have to do that more, <laughs> and that's what his entire like shtick ended up becoming is is just it's dark at times, but most of the time, you yeah, know, it's extremely relatable. Um, it's put in ways that you're like, thank you. He made me think of the environment differently. This guy because he did a shtick during his live at the Beacon Theater one yeah. where he talks about. Uh, throwing a Snickers bar on the ground and somebody goes, don't you care about the environment? Oh, yeah. And he's like, this is New York City. This isn't the environment. <laughs> I'm not like in the middle of Wyoming in the woods throwing shit up. Yeah, fuck you. You're like, I'm not like throwing things on. It's not the environment. This is shitty New York City. The whole thing is a goddamn garbage bag. All right, anyway. That's great. I love Louis. I got to stop talking about him so uh, Kyle can vote. <laughs> um, mm, This is really tough, man. I know. This is one this of the hardest rough. ones ever. Jesus Christ. Um, God, let's see. Louis C.K., man, he's got such a great... God, I can't say anything that y'all haven't said that's being redundant, so let me just try and figure out where I'm going to go on this. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go Chappelle on this one. Whoa. I think I'm going to have to go Chappelle. Yeah, I feel Chappelle on this one. I think, like, uh, we haven't had him in about 10 years but it's something we always wanted. You know, we always right. wanted him back. I'm everybody, not crying. You're every, crying. Every, yeah. Everybody collectively <laughs> wanted him back, you know? Right. And now that he's back, like, he's back. He's not going anywhere. Like, this is the beginning of, like, yeah. chapter two of his career. Right. So, sure. Like, this is, like, we're into some really, really, really interesting times ahead of us, you know? And, like, 
and like he like this list kind of embodies that like who like who's the greatest working stand-up comedian right now you know and i mean and like and that means past present and future and i think like he really fits that bill i think like in in about 10 or 15 years like we're still going to be talking about dave Chappelle and everything like that and how how important he is to our generation and how how he is the voice of our generation and everything like that so uh cool. i think uh, i think it's i think it's dave Chappelle for me i think i gotta lock it in once wins <laughs> <laughs> once, was, <laughs> once was a four seed. Actually, you know what? Dave Chappelle was like my number three in my list, so whatever. I'm not. I shouldn't be mad. Uh, Dave yeah. Chappelle didn't even make my top ten. So. Oh my god. I, I really. Out of an oversight, it was an oversight. Oh, like was, I see. I see. Yeah. But then you know you have his new material fresh in your brain, so yeah, yeah, that, helps. that really did play a role. Yeah, that did for it, me too. Absolutely. When, yeah, because I mean we referenced it quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to mention about Louis his uh, his sheer tenacity because he dropped a show on his website without telling anybody in advance yeah at all and put real stars in it Edie Falco uh, Steve Buscemi how you doing and uh it's like Bill Burr but is. like two octaves lower bit. you gotta you know you gotta chill out a little bit it's Steve Buscemi hey Steve how you doing <laughs> oh my god and Alan yeah. Alda uh it, you have this great cast and, and you're like wait when did he do this yeah I, I don't understand wait what's going on right now and it ended up being like a stage play and was just one of the it was like my number one favorite show of last year hmm. um I missed it I think I think it, that he ended up selling it to Hulu, so it should be on Hulu now. Okay. If it's not, I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube because he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. He doesn't look for that stuff. No. <laughs> he does, does he even have a legal team that's like looking I don't think for shit so. like that? He sells stuff for like five dollars, and even yeah. though I buy it because it's five fucking dollars, even the emails that he sends out to people yeah, are hysterical. He's like, like, steal it or don't. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great. Um, yeah, that dude is, has drive for days, and yeah. um, he does. I appreciate the fact that you have to step away from something that you love uh, in order to come back to it even better than you were before, which is exactly what Chappelle did. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing it currently with music, not that I expect to come back better than I was before, but it's just that break that you think you need, uh, you just need to get away from it. Yeah. You just need yeah. to get in a mental space away from... John Mayer, man. Because you, you put so much pressure on yourself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like three years, four years off. Yeah. And you just put so much mental pressure on Do yourself. You like, good. how can I be as good as I once was? Yeah. And if you just constantly remind yourself of that, then you're never going to be that yeah. at all. Um, so you just have to step away from it. And thank goodness Chappelle did because, man, we got some great shit in return. Yeah. That's for damn oh, yeah. sure. It it was worth the oh, my God. Hey, man, you gay, you gay. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So that's, uh, we don't have a topic yet for next week. We're going to hash it out. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't. I mean, we don't. Oh, you know what, Kyle and I are going to talk about games next because that'll okay. be it'll be after March, be beginning of April when that episode drops. So um, might as well talk about March and games. Do our All first right. do our first little game bang. Cool. Yeah, game bang. Game bang. And uh, there's going to be a little format to it. I think we came up with right. I think I think we did. Yeah. yeah. I, think we locked, I think we locked something in. Right. So uh, I'm. Well, I'll have to search for it in our chat that we have on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to, to talk about that because March has just been a beating in, in almost like every category of media. It's crazy. Um, so stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, if we can find a guest in time, we'll do a gaming bracket. But uh, JD just doesn't, you know. I don't play a lot of new things. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, right. I, mean, I get it. I get it. Sorry. I get it. It's 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 more cost effective to not be an early adopter of like anything. Uh, it really at is. All. Yeah. Yeah. In life. It. So I have Ever. to do that. Uh not to mention well, you know, we might end up having to take a break that week anyway because I have to go to I'm going to Dallas Film Festival, everybody. Dallas oh, International Film Festival. Dude. Covering it for horrorgeeklife.com. Gonna see twelve movies. I'm gonna write so much, I'm gonna be tired I'm gonna retire from writing after I do it. Damn. Um that's a joke. But uh, for real, I'm really excited. Lots of uh, Sundance and South by Southwest hits are playing there. Lost City of Z, I'm going to see that before everybody else does. I'm Sweet. excited. I'm fucking pumped, dude. Um, so I might have to take that week off because that starts the week. It starts the yeah. 30th of March and then goes into the next weekend of like April 9th. Okay. Hot. It's hot. So hot. And then Mayor's not that it's far hot. along down and the road. And then Mayor's the next fucking Shit. weekend man that's that week yeah that's crazy man we're gonna have and then hell house i'm going back to oh sweet um, by the way i want to mention kyle and i used to do uh together uh paranormal investigating we'll do it again soon i'm sure um we did this we did ghost hunts at haunted hill house we want to mention this to everybody that's listening hopefully you made it this far uh phil the owner of haunted hill house cool as fuck dude uh he just got cited by the city of mineral wells that he needs to make all of this 
he needs to adjust the house, you know, uh, make paint, you know, paint, paint, whatever, mm. make a new porch and all this shit. It doesn't come up to code. And if he does it X amount of months, then it's getting, he's going to have to shut the place down. Shit. So everybody needs to go to GoFundMe.com and look for uh, the Haunted Hill House. Um, yeah. Try to help a brother, brother out because uh, he needs it and he needs it in a deadline. And the, uh, the ghost hunts are just, he asks at such a low rate that it just doesn't cover the cost of what he's needing to, to repair. Yeah, right. Um. So help him out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, great dude. I can't, can't emphasize that enough. Um, and if you want to know more about par- Paranormal Investigating, yeah. where can people find you, Kyle? Uh, not about Paranormal Investigating, but they can find me <laughs> right, on I know. Facebook. Or, I mean, sometimes I talk about it there. Why not? Uh, you can find me at Subcultured. I might be writing something sometime soon. Who knows? Uh, you can find me. That's That's it. You can't find me anywhere else. Those are all the places. No Twitter. You can fuck off with all that. And you're breaking from Twitch currently because of all the fucking nonstop single player games. Yeah, I'm breaking from Twitch currently, but uh, I might just start playing single player games on there if you want to tune in. Fuck, okay. you know, great. Fuck it, if Mass not, Effect's whatever. out, so why not? I know. Yeah, people are so weird about spoilers, but everyone can just don't tune in if you don't want to fucking <laughs> watch spoilers. Right. You know, like, Jesus Christ. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. like, don't tune into this. Oh the my god, fucking... you can paint your ship that spoilers. Why would you click on spoilers? Why would you click on a stream that you see a title that you don't want the spoilers on? I know. You know what I mean? Dumb, that's, that's like that's streaming hard. a movie on Netflix, like I don't want to watch this yet. How is this even a thing? Like, I, I don't up- understand it. You can upgrade your people in Mass <clears throat> Effect. Oh my god. It's like turning the channel to HBO mid movie. On a movie that you haven't seen yet. Right, and, and getting like, mad at HBO for showing the movie. Yeah, it's like, well, you turn the channel to fucking HBO, idiot. Anyway. Stayed there. Wow. <laughs> uh, also, uh, <laughs> you mentioned sub-culture.com. Soon enough, I'm going to have a, a highly educated Power Rangers review on there. Uh, because I grew up with that shit. I have a lot to say about that movie. Which I actually really enjoyed. And uh, I'm surprised to say that. Um, I think both JD and Kyle are very surprised that I enjoyed it. Yeah. Because it looked like shit from the get-go. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually thinking this is all part of uh, a It's a ruse, time. yeah. Uh, you're going to reveal this at some point going, you guys, it was fucking stupid. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's, so. it's stupid. <laughs> it is stupid in the way that Fast and Furious is stupid, but in the sense that it knows it's dumb, but it also has a lot of heart and the focus is on the characters. Um, it's about I would say the action is better in Fast and Furious. Family. But I like the characters better in power rangers because it's yeah. about family and uh <laughs> friends can be families oh <laughs> uh, there's just a moment that really uh, something about that movie touched me man and the fact that they went out of their way to change like the race of certain rangers and add personality traits that exist in the world like autism and and you have somebody that's bisexual in there like okay. they don't they don't make it like I'm bisexual. I, yeah. Hi, I'm Trini, and I'm, I'm bisexual. I'm because I like other things. Right. <laughs> yeah, they just go, they, you know, she talks about she's having uh, problems talking, communicating with her parents, and somebody was like, oh, man, what's going on? And, and as they dive into it, somebody eventually goes, uh, boyfriend problems, and she just kind of pauses and stares at him and just goes, yeah, you know, boyfriend <clears> problems. <throat> and he goes, oh, girlfriend problems. And she's just like, long pause. And I'm like, see, that's it. That's all you need to do. It yeah, doesn't need yeah. to be, I'm, hello, I'm right. bisexual, everybody. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is how it is in right. real life. Right. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like in Mad Max Fury Road where you had women doing cool shit. Yeah. Instead of being like, guys, we're women and we're kicking ass. Right. Like Supergirl does every just a fucking week. Did you see what I just did? Ass chicks, y'all. Yeah. Who says girls can't do this? Nah. High that's five. like every episode of Supergirl is like, why do you call her Supergirl? That's the, that's the worst of that the bunch. And that's me. It says a lot that that's the worst of right. that whole bunch. <laughs> it does. It really does. There's some bad fucking shows in there. Uh, Legends is awful and Flash is okay. Is any Are any of them better than Iron Fist? Would you say at this point? I haven't watched Iron Fist yet. I'm, I'm Iron watching Fist Luke Cage. Is, I'm, Iron I'm Fist go is so Luke bad Cage and first. I can say it's better really? than every DC show. Oh, okay. I can say that. So, I mean, it, not that so bad. It's not as bad as the critics are saying, but like it's bad. Uh, yeah, we're only four episodes in when we talked about it last. I w- I'm still only four episodes okay. in. I haven't I haven't progressed. I have, I have finished it and I'm not happy about it. Oh okay. boy. Are any of your complaints uh, racial in nature? What's up? Are any of your complaints racial in nature, like everybody else? No, not okay, at all. Good. Not even a little bit. That's so stupid of me. Okay. <laughs> like literally, like, literally they could have. There's all these articles <clears throat> that are like, if they would have just hired the original Asian American actor, the whole entire thing would have. No, no it wouldn't have. The writing is still dog shit. So <laughs> not, nothing, nothing would have been fixed. You just would have had an Asian yeah. guy there instead. Then of the you would have had everybody so. going. Well, you should have cast it as a white dude. Yeah, this would have had the happened. opposite side. This is what happens when you deviate from the source material. It, there's no winning that battle. Right. So. 
Um, it's okay, you know. Like there's some fights in there that are yeah. that are pretty good. And Finn uh, Jones is just a mismatch. He's just not Finn good. Jones uh, gets somehow worse as the show goes. <laughs> oh on, man, so, yeah. he doesn't he even get more comfortable in that role. That's no, he doesn't get more shame. comfortable in that role. Oh, oh, oh. And he even interviews he's like, "We're yeah. all family on set, and we, we do such a good job together on the set of Defenders." I'm like, "They all hate you, man, because your show sucks." <laughs> Fucking weak link. <laughs> We're on the set of Defenders going, guys, Finn's here. You got to quiet down. Yeah, everyone stop talking about how successful your shows are. Finn's here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Hey, and, and then in they the all go up to him like, hey, have, uh, hey Finn, I, I wanted to, like, at least reach out to you to at least let you know that, like, hey, we feel for you, but we don't know how you feel because our shows are actually good. So, right, so see you tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow, man. <laughs> Buck up. Yeah. Oh, boy. I like a lot so, about Luke Cage so far. I mean, it's Luke Cage is, Luke Cage is, is good. Uh, I like the Cottonmouth good. arc. Oh yeah, it Peter's, it Peter's yeah. off at the end, but uh, it's good. I love Ali as as Cottonmouth. Yeah, Cottonmouth, uh, yeah. He, Oscar winning Mahershala Ali. For real. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, that's some of the that's that's some fitting music, man. Mm-hmm. That's some great. music. Oh yeah, the music is the star of that show. So for me. good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. Um, so that's it. I mean, JD's on bigger than my podcast sometimes with Herp, me Herp and on, on the John Mayer yeah. podcast. Going so on go, the road go check that soon. Out. Yeah, go listen. Going on the road soon. We might do a crossover with the Mayer cast, the uh, second John Mayer podcast. That would be really cool. Because uh, really I don't know cool. if we're going to have time, though, because we're going to pull in right when the concert's about to start. Yeah. So, and even he'll be there like all little, day. Even if it's like a little quickie episode, it'll be fun. Yeah, a quickie? Little, tell, little tell, him, out. tell them to bring the Coors Light since that's their official sponsor. And I'll bring the... What do we drink? Unofficial sponsor. We, oh, drink, we drink Jameson. Jameson. We're that's right. classic We're going to just mix them. That tastes like but shit. I, I also drink Coors Light, so I'm not like saying anything about Coors right. Light. It's just... We've always drank It's a Coors Minnesota Coors. thing, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No judgment there, but... Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in to this... Lo- well, it's not that long. I'm surprised, actually. Uh, we just had technical issues before the show, so it feels like it's been a long time. Uh, so, <laughs> peek behind the curtain. See you guys later yeah. as we talk about games in the next episode. Skirt, skirt, back to the Here, me, here, me.